get smart with your money before the year 2025. You know what? I mean, um, I'm going to take my time and explain to you what I mean by this. The era of naivety is gone. We are in the era whereby even if you never got this education as far as the finances is concerned from the campus or the university, college or high school, at least right now we have some channels that you can be watching. For instance, Good Joseph's channel, you can get some information. For instance, there's some guys who tell me, you know what, Joseph, I didn't even know that money market fund exists. I didn't even know whether there is something like that. Joseph, I didn't even know that with as little as 1,000 shilling, I can buy a couple of shares from a given company. I thought that is a reserved investment for the wealthy, for the rich. Please, we are in the era of knowledge, the era of what we call the information. This is the era whereby, seriously, if you're still having some cash idle in your bank, what are you doing? What is going on? What, what is affecting you? Why aren't you taking action? Aren't you informed that indeed you're not supposed to have what we call the idle money? Let me just put the... Aren't you informed that you're not supposed to have what we call the idle money? You remember that joke your high school teacher used to tell you that the idle mind is devil's workshop? Can you just imagine? Do you usually suffer from this problem called the impulsion, uh, impulsive buy? You know, impulsive, impulsive buy. You know, whereby you buy something just because, hey, it is there and I have the money. So you buy it. There is no justification. You still survive on the era whereby you confuse between your needs, between your needs and your wants. Do you know the difference? Okay. Do you know something called the hierarchy of priority? Hierarchy of priority, you know, priority. You prioritize, you know what to prioritize for now. For instance, I'm going to give you a very simple example. Say you had like 5,000 Kenyan shillings with you somewhere or whichever the amount of money in terms of the currency. It can be beer, can be naira, can be rand, can be kwacha, can be pula, whatever it is. Now, the point is, here you have a kid who needs school fees. You haven't paid your rent and there is no food. And of course, there is no electricity. Tell me among those four things, all of them appear to be a need. And of course, a bit they are. A kid, a kid for the school fees for the kid, you need to pay your rent, you are due, you, you have the overdues, I got no food, and maybe you got no lights in your house. So which one would you pick? Because this one requires the wisdom. Which one should I prioritize? This is what we say, getting smart with your money. Which one would you go for? Would you go for the school fees first or would you go for the food? And of course, everyone here will go for the food first. If there is no food, of course, you go for the food. After the food, what do you go for? The shelter. You go for like, you know what, landlord, landlord, you know what? I owe you 5,000, I owe you two, whatever. You can take one. You, get, you, get, you, you actually find a way of negotiating yourself through, uh, through particular that particular you know, situation. So the point is, we are in an era whereby, go to that bank of yours. Don't all the time, for example, let's say you have a couple of millions in a bank, just lying there. Don't get used to going to the tellers, and with all the due respect to the tellers that you get, you know, in a, in a typical bank. Go ask for a manager. Go talk with the manager, you know, a manager of the branch. Tell them I have this and this and that. What option or what offer do you guys have for me? There's something called highly negotiated fixed deposit. Highly negotiated, negotiated, negotiated fixed deposit, okay? Fixed deposit. You know why? There are two types of deposit. There are an average deposit that anyone can be given. Oh, you have some money. You can fix with that. We'll give you that. That's, that's the information that, that an average individual is given. And then we have the highly negotiated fixed deposit. Especially if you have a, you know, you know, financial muscles and what have you. You can have a conversation with this particular bank. You can actually come up with a, with a, with a thing like of investment. You tell them, I have a parcel of land. I have this amount of money. I'm looking forward to gain doing this. How about you guys? You fund me to this extent. We can do this. You, you get what I'm saying. So have yourself this understanding of coming together in that particular institution, finding out. They are there to make money, of course, and also be there to make money. Don't by the way, I don't know whether you know this. Do you know if the banks were to rely with the ideas that they gave us or the, should I say, advice they give us, do you know we'd run broke? Definitely. Why? Because that particular kind of an advice that they give, it is not applicable. It is not the best that you can ever get in town. This is the era that you are supposed to understand. There are many, many upcoming investors. For example, we are having new companies that are given uh, what you call the regulation. For example, in Kenya, under the body called the CMA, the Capital Market Authority of Kenya, we have newer babies coming in town in terms of the companies that are, are doing what we call the asset management. They are managing people's wealth. And you can as 
well. Take as little as your 3,000, 100 Kenyan shillings, 500. They manage. By the way, let me tell you one secret. This information used to be hidden. These people who used to be in these things, they used to get kept to get keep the information. The wealthy and the rich used to go there, and we don't hate them. We love them. Okay, and we are all wealthy. That's a fact. It all depends on what you call wealth in your life. So the reality is we no longer hide this information because what they do is that, guess what? I have this a billion bob with me. I have 300 million. I have this a million. I have whatever. See, for now, I do not have a thing that I want to invest. And again, <clears throat> I don't want to go these hustles and bustles of investment. You as a company ran by the professionals, you can take this 1 million of mine, 2 million, 300,000, 500,000, whichever money, amount of money that you have, you give it to them, you tell them, professionally, I know you understand. You understand very well the, the, the capital markets, uh, that, that is the, the MMF, the bond fund, the balance fund, the equity fund, the fixed, you know, fixed trust and what have you. You understand all these nitty gritties, the rates and real index fund. You go invest in those particular areas. And of course, by law, they aren't supposed, for, for example, in a money market fund, by law in Kenya, that company is not supposed to invest in, a, uh, if you invest your money, if you tell them, I would like you to invest my money in a money market fund. So by law, they are not supposed to invest that money in a thing that is going beyond 1.5 years. That is 18 months. They aren't supposed to do that. That is against the law. So you already know my money is not only safe and secure, it is assuring me the capital preservation, but at the same time, my money is actually giving me birth to small babies and can decide to rely with those small babies that are coming from that particular money. Number three, it is good to understand how are you framing your retirement plan? How, by the way, when I say retirement, do not associate retirement with old age. Because the moment you tell people, let's plan about the retirement, and they are, they are 25, they think like, mm, you're talking about 40 years from today. Nah, it's not interesting. There are people who even go for retire at 30, you know, provided you have the system and the, you know, and the structure laid for you that are pumping in money into your pocket, you can decide to switch off and you can travel the world and enjoy. By the way, I don't know how many have this view. Uh, this is my view. I think that God's purpose and, 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 and I think that God's purpose for our lives was to us pursue that what we were created for. And that what we were created for was meant to not only be beneficial to us, but also be beneficial to other people. For instance, uh, I do believe whatever I'm doing is a God-given job and an opportunity. That's what I believe, and I give credit to God to come here. Yes, I invest on those particular areas, but I come here before this camera. I share this information with you. You pick something. You also invest by yourself out there. And I believe from where you are right now, you have uh, that God-given talent. You have that ability that you have. That, you have that thing that you are good at. If maybe you were to shun away from worrying about your rent, you worrying about your food, the clothing, the children bills and what have you. You see the bigger picture or you have the capability of pursuing the bigger picture. For example, if today, if someone assures you that you're going to eat, drink, dress and your kids will be okay, what that thing that you'll be able to do or what that thing would you pursue? Some of you guys, you are very serious courses like medicine and engineering. Some of you will be having guitars on the streets singing to people. Probably that is what you'll be singing the karaoke on the streets and what have you because maybe that will bring joy to somebody who is coming from the job and what have you so the, the point is when when we get smart with our money when we understand what we want and please um as, as much as you can try to avoid this question of joseph i have x amount of money what is the best investment that i can have okay there is nothing wrong with you asking that question but the question itself um it, 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 it is not the best way to ask the question, of course, but I'm not saying you should not ask, but the, the reality is it is not the best way. The best way should be, you know what, Joseph, I'm aiming to get, say, 100,000 each and every month from an investment. And of course, when you say investment, I'm assuming you understand. And if you do not, then you can get it from my older video. I'm assuming that you understand investments, they usually give you money without you doing anything. For instance, if today you invest or you buy stocks or shares, you do nothing. You don't call them. You don't show up each and every day. You don't have to go to that company. And blah, 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 blah. You don't have to run the nitty gritties. They run everything. You've given them the money to do whatever they do. And then they give you the dividends or they share with you the profit. You're not doing anything with that money. So maybe you'd be like, you know what, Joseph? I would like to be earning 100000 using that kind of a system whereby I do not have to go back there. I do not have to make calls. 
and I'm relaxing and I have five years to create that system. Guess what? Now, I know the time that we have, that is five years, and I know the amount of money that you need a passive income. So what is actually mandated to me, and of course, I will need to understand how are you in terms of the finances? How much can you set aside in terms of the, you know, what we call, how much do you have or how much can you set aside in terms of the savings or the investments? Now, we'll be able to look for a vehicle that can take you to that particular destination. So when you have all this particular understanding, and again, when I say get smart with your finances or get smart with your money before 2025, it is whereby you don't invest because people are investing. You invest because you've actually taken care time, you've done your own research, and you've, have what, you've done what we call, you've compared and contrast variety of options for you. For instance, you've actually checked on what is an MMF, you've checked a bond, you've checked a bill, you've checked, let's say, a real estate, all right? So, so that you be like, you know what, I have this three million. If I throw it in an MMF, I stand to gain this, I stand to gain this, I start to gain that. Mm -hmm. So this one has a high interest, for instance. Now you ask yourself, which one here assures me what we call the capital preservation? Okay, this does, this does not. So you can justify why you're getting yourself into that particular investment. Not just waking up, throwing money into that particular thing, and then expecting them. Listen, investing, by the way, is not, it's not a hobby, it's not like fun, it's not. We invest with purpose. You, 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 I have you heard of somebody saying you speak to your money? You pop, I don't know whether this name exists in English. You purposify your money. You know, you tell that money, I want to put you here because I want to. You usually take a kid in the morning and you go to their level and you tell them, you know what, mama, you know what, daddy, you know, I would like you to get A's. I would like you to, you purpose for that, you know. That particular time that kid is going to school. That is exactly what you do. Can you imagine this? By the way, let me ask a very simple question. Do you take kids because people take their kids to school? Oh, and if you do that, my friend, I'm telling you, you have a problem. Okay, me and you, we know kids ought to be taken to school. But the point is, do you take them to school because someone else is taking them to school? No, there are people who don't ever take their kids to school. They do the home and uh, the homeschooling and, and, and what have you. So the point is that money that you put into that investment, don't just rush because everyone is rushing to money market. For, oh, like, boom, 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 boom. You go to, you don't even, for example, I do get this kind of a calls. Hey, Joseph, how are you? I'm very fine. Thank you. I love your videos. Thank you. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I would like, I have 5,000. I would like to invest in a money market fund because I got fired. I do not have a job and I would like to pay my bills. And I'm like, Jesus, that won't help you. Or Joseph, I would like to buy stocks or shares. I have 5,000. Or I got fired. I do not have a job and I would like to pay my bills. Yo, that won't work. It won't work. You should be thinking the language of how can I get some fruits and vegetables, some eggs and whatever. How can I sell coffee? How can I hook this? How can I do that? Or how can I get that secondhand clothing from the whatever? How can I sell? Th 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 that, that is the language. If you only have 5,000 and you would like to get um, some money to pay your bills and what have you. This NMF you buy, if you invest it today, tomorrow we'll be able to pay your bills. That's a reality. Because it's an investment. It has low risk and it has low income or other uh, low returns. So you need to understand all these nitty gritties because if you do not, then you're gonna get yourself into problems. Did you get what I'm just saying? So it is good to understand, you know, what do you need, when and why you can justify that. And when you understand yourself, the purpose, the mission, the goal, the, where you are heading, your destination, you'll be having a very easy time, not only to yourself, but also to other people who are out there. So before we clock the 2025, I'm making this video on the, uh, you know, September of 2024. We are like three months shy away from clocking another new year. Or do you want the 2025 to be just like any other year where you write resolution, you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to keep away eating this and that and that. You don't do nothing. You just stay there. You know, you don't commit on anything because to you, you do not love to disturb your comfort. You just want to enjoy your comfort. Let me tell you one thing. Comfort will always lead to average. And I always tell people, as much as you are pursuing what we call your passion, you know, that thing that you love, always ask yourself, yes, I love it. Can it pay my bills? If it is yes, then that would be the greatest thing. Doing that what you love and it's paying your bills, that would be an amazing thing to do in life. All right? So get smart with money. 
in short, getting smart with money is being out there and trying to do the best that your money can never give. By the way, you know what, guys? I got nominated for the fire the best financial coach of the year by the Africa Glow Company. That is one of the biggest companies we have. Okay. By the way, go ahead. I would love to have your vote because I want we 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 bring this particular reward home, and you can help me. To Bring this particular reward home by simply voting me. How do you vote exactly that? On the comment section, I have pinned a link. Click that link and then you go to that particular website and you can be able to vote me. And that is exactly how you support me. We bring this particular uh, you know, award back home and we celebrate. That's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, make sure as well you grab that number of mine if you would like to have a conversation with me. And my number is always on the description of this specific video. Go grab it. Let's talk business. For now, it's a goodbye and see you in the next one.